Hello, I'm your host, Eddie Labar, bringing you more from Holy Hell. Every 12 years, every 12 years of my life, I've experienced some sort of major spiritual revelation starting around 12 in Colorado while playing near the scene of a later 1993 hate crime. I had a haunting premonition of what seemed like a satanic tornado on the spot where we were tortured around 24 years later. Also during that time, the term failsafe came up as though it would be associated with me. It gave me nightmares for weeks and seemed contemporaneous with the 1964 movie Failsafe, which explained the term, though I never comprehended it for 24 more years when it would fit and be realized. Around age 24, in a Phoenix apartment, I enjoyed a strong visit from the Holy Ghost in an Eye of God format, revealing a ministry and my destiny to address the nations of the world with His words of truth. I have since seen flashes of the ghost as a cloud, which flows and trails a bit and catches up when it pauses. I saw it hover over the burial spot of a murder victim and cried out, her body is cold and broken and cries out to me. During and after the Eye of God experience, there was never anything on earth I feared more than the Holy Ghost. There are statements comparing God to the ocean and that the voice of God could shatter the cedars of Lebanon accurately worded. I agreed after this experience there is nothing more powerful and noted it began as it began an angel whispered off to my left the Holy Ghost is here and in a second it had encompassed me and I saw myself as a traced white outline inside a drop of water or as if inside a transparent cloud bank or a, a bug suspended inside the acrylic decoration in a belt buckle and I was then conscientiously aware of all the sections of my brain as they were outlined. The cloud was roughly the size of a compact automobile in dimension and was like 100 perfect souls which kept perpetually enfolding upon itself in a cloud. The sensation of power was something for which I had to draw new standards and means to grasp or describe as its presence was comparable to maybe 440 volts in this animated cloud. Okay, again, the sensation of power was something for which I had to draw new standards and means to grasp or describe, and his presence was comparable to maybe 440 volts in this animated cloud that was doing all but frying me. When it spoke, the whole cloud spoke. The ebbing voice was like 440 volts driving through me with each syllable. From over my head to below my feet, each phrase, I was trembling in fear, in tears, and I asked, why did you come to me instead of Dr. Billy Graham or someone? The spirit responded, you've had good intentions, but these things I find distasteful about you. The words but and distasteful were almost heart-stopping, and the next few seconds into the next transition was as an eternity, and I remember the feelings of an expression of nowhere to hide, as in hiding in the caves and praying the rocks would fall in. The spirit cloud transitioned into the shape of an eye or eyeball, and my traced white outline was in the iris. I saw the next phase scene. All parts of my body were transparent except for my two lungs, which were darkened with tar and smoking contaminants, as if inside a drop of water. It never said anything in that phase. I just saw or witnessed it as if in a wakeful dream, and I experienced an awakening, awareness, or glimpse of relief, also that this was not my final judgment, and further, I was not dead and had time to correct this flaw. I would not want to be found dead with it. The Lord came as my Savior this time, and the next time I would be in this position, I would not be in a material embodiment. By the end of the maybe 10 or 20 minute encounter, I had eased up a bit. The Spirit said several things, including, through you I will address the nations of the world, and that through these means, the internet, I can put my mug on the far side of the globe with this little camera, and it's just, it's just awesome, and that is in, in fact happening. The Spirit cloud then departed from me, leaving me glowing with scenes and images still appearing scenes of some new used high-end musical equipment as it exited via drifting through the wall of the apartment through the area where the door was. Over and over, I could never forget how when the cloud-like spirit spoke, there was no mouth or orifice, but the entire thing spoke from below my feet to over the top of my head, and just the utterance or ebbing of the voice drove through me. 
I was trembling, in tears, pinned down to the couch I was seated in, almost laid out flat, paralyzed with fear. My attention was riveted as it then turned into an eyeball shape with my traced white outline in the iris and it spoke, each word literally drove through my entire body again with a sense of 440 volts driving through me with each syllable, which simply didn't have the physical force to kill me. That, I've since believed, was the spirit of Jesus of Nazareth. He's like a portable model or representative of the planet's overall oceanic volume of the spirit of life, God Almighty. I was conscientious of the spiritual omnipresence for a long time. God is the mass of all life combined. Jesus of Nazareth is as the portable model, described as what 100 perfect souls collectively combined, which perpetually enfold upon itself. It, it's, it's unique. The line, could you imagine a yell came to mind after that experience? Looks like he's seen the ghost is not and not a joke. As the spirit departed, I saw a vision of some musical stage gear, and behold, a month or so later, we were physically buying band gear from one guy who nicknamed his PA system God. With 24 15-inch Altex and JBLs and 1200 watts, it wasn't even close. I didn't say anything. In 2005, the spirit again presented itself and spoke with both male and female nuances entered in connection with the many maternal issues. My earliest memories include the warmth of the Methodist Church in Montrose, Colorado. And at that time and age, there was very much a sense that God was there. It was a spiritual hearth, which I still have very fond, warm memories of. I have fractional memory since the 2000, excuse me, since the 1993 hate crime. And, and I can remember being in the womb I can remember things in very early childhood, yet there are huge blocks of my life that are entirely missing. Some of which are being in the crib at night and tactile memories like being scratched with an ice pick dragged up and down the length of my body as I slept. Forgotten from age two to three, came back 50 years later like bad delirium tremens. Also more recently, it was revealed that there were intruders inside the house with my mother and I, who was, uh, they described as being fairly attractive at that age, and that she was nearly raped. Um, so I, we were very lucky. Christmas Day, 2004, at roughly age 48, 49, I was almost dead from the depression and despair of the 1993 dilemma. I felt literally as though I was on my deathbed. A depression so low that I believe the second thought in my mind as I woke up was that I didn't even want to live anymore. The holidays were depressing that year. I barely made it through until the first week of January 2005. In January 2005, before the passing of Pope John Paul II, I experienced a true spiritual reawakening and ministry marching orders along with the ways and means of addressing the world. My spiritual rebirth came on one of the first days in January 2005 and waking up that morning I saw the image of Jesus sitting on the bed with me. In fact his spirit was as the image of a man who was sitting there halfway merged with mine and said I heard you hated your life so I will rejuvenate you with some of mine. Then a day or so later you've not been able to pray for a long long time so I give you St. Peter's power of prayer. This was in January, and by March, April, I was finally able to compartmentalize the fuge and was actively contacting the Senate's Intel Committee and the U.S. again in an attempt to bring resolution to the uh, still unresolved 1993 hate crime. As spring went on, I witnessed Pope John Paul's soul pass. Spiritually, when I felt some major event was to happen in during the month of May 2005, but May came and went, leaving me in the same futile death of silence, vacuum, and frustration, with a sense of being literally buried alive in a lifelong tomb of living death, or of being conscious and paralyzed in a coffin. I very seriously wondered why such a gift, I felt, had been given to a near comatose person 
in a fuge, isolated on a ranch in the middle of nowhere where I had laid in waste for 12 years as of 2005. And upon discovery would lay buried alive for decades more under a dog pile of evildoers, including all the same felons in my formal complaints. I watched Pope Benedict XVI crowned in Rome and detached from those daydream themes as a spiritual flow grew and remains incessant since. Its volume has displaced everything else in life, and I anxiously look forward to that which remains. In September 2007, I seemingly was at the midpoint of the time frame window for this gospel in, in terms of my ability to present it and, and willingness and ability, that is. And in October found new inspirations with the formatting and completions of some of the precepts I received by writing a new chapter entitled Ants, that is red and black ants and black and red ants. There are different colors on the outside, but they're spiritually the same on the inside. For each soul is the same. We are as sparks of the great bonfire of life.